this time on episode 333 of Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. We're going to discuss the finale, Iron Fist Season 2, Episode 9, War Without End, and Season 2, Episode 10, A Duel of Iron. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the weekly Marvel news. I'm David S. Dawson from the Intellectual Podcast, a show that spotlights creatives from all walks of life. Part of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the show you're checking out now. Shows on the network are individually owned, and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other incredibly geeky shows at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. You have been granted clearance by director Alfonso Mac McKenzie. Stand by for a shield debriefing. All information to be discussed here is classified and may only be discussed among agents granted clearance by the S.H.I.E.L.D. director. Now it's time for your scheduled debriefing. I'm Director S.P. And I'm Agent Michelle. Welcome to Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. We're a Marvel Comic Universe fan show. The show is recorded on Sunday, May 24th, 2020, live from the Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. studios and broadcast... Astroplane wide via www.geeks.live. Come and join our live chat as we record. Michelle, happy Aviation Maintenance Technician Day. Great. I, I mean, we got to keep those planes going. We do. We do. You know, uh, unfortunately, they, they do run into problems here and there. But the FAA actually came up with this in 2001 to talk about the aviation maintenance technicians that are senior mechanics and then have done a lot to keep planes safe for everybody that flies and the majority of people in the United States have flown at one point in time or another and a lot look forward to do so in the future. So I just decided since there was some history to this day that we would claim it for this day. There are other days on May 24th, 2020, but this it was the one that I went with also being involved in aviation and space and stuff like that i thought this was cool yeah no i understand all right it's really neat yeah and now that we've got that out of the way let us continue with the rest of the show legends of shield is a fan-based podcast on the abc television show marvel's agents of shield coming back this week for season seven the multiple marvel small screen series like iron fist and the marvel cinematic and comic book universes in general because of buying guns down by the river. If you'd like to talk to us about buying guns out of the back of a van by some guy named Turk, you can catch us on our website, legendsofshield.com. Uh, you can leave us a voicemail, 844 the bus one. That's 844 843 2871. You can call it even with three grand for two guns and tell us all about your buying experience on our Facebook page, Legends of Shield Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at Legends of Shield. If you'd like to leave us a comment about your buying experience of weapons in not so prominent places, you can do so on our YouTube page at youtube.com slash geek. You can tell your Amazon device to enable Legends of Shield skill. And remember, Legends of Shield is a proud member of the gunnageek.com network. Stephen John Drew is the owner. Michelle, it's just you and me. Yep, that should change next time because Ages of Shield's coming back. We do hope to see a couple of the other agents next week. We will see if that happens or not. I've, I've learned not to count my chickens before they're hatched, but we do anticipate a full panel of agents. Yes, meeting on Thursday, talk about Agents of Shield. Yes. You and I have gone through this whole Defenders Iron Fist series together, season two together, and I think we owe each other a virtual high five or fist bump with high five, getting it through it. <laughs> Boom. Boom. Five, high five. Yeah. Especially, I, I really, I, I deserve a raise considering this is your fault. <laughs> it was something to do, right? Something to do. If it wasn't for this, it would have been something else so we're going to come back with luke cage as soon as there is an open week and we're available to record after or during agents of shield we'll see how that goes but we do plan to switch our live recording if you happen to want to catch us live 
to Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern time at Geeks.Live, and we will be discussing Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 7 here in 2020. You looking forward to that? Yes. All right, so am I. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. In the meantime, it is time to get through the finale of Iron Fist. Iron Fist Season 2 premiered on Netflix September 7th, 2018. Season 2, Episode 9, War Without End, the penultimate episode, and the finale episode, Season 2, Episode 10, A Duel of Iron, are the two episodes we're going to talk about today. I'm going to start talking about the creative team of War Without End. The director was Sanford Brookstaver, who has 46 directing credits starting in 1999, party like it's 1999. With one episode of Dawson's Creek, one episode of True Calling, one episode of Prison Break, four episodes of Bones, three episodes of Jericho, one episode of Burn Notice, like the show, one episode of Human Target, two episodes of The Protector, one episode of a show that I wish I did not watch called Revolution, five episodes of Revenge, one episode of Iron Fist, and one episode of Jessica Jones. This episode, War Without End, was written by Daniel Shaddock, who has five writing credits starting in 2009, including four episodes of White Collar, nine episodes of Graceland, one episode of Good Girls Revolt, and this episode of Iron Fist. Michelle, let's run down the creative team of A Duel of Iron. This episode was directed by Jonas Pate, uh, has direct 28 directing credits starting in 1996 including five, Good versus Evil, one, Battlestar Galactica, three, Caprica, one, Believe, eight, Aquarius, three episodes of Chance, one, Iron Fist, one, New Amsterdam, and six, Outer Banks. This was written by the showrunner, Raven Metzner, has 10 writing credits starting in 2008, um, including the film Electra, four episodes of Six Degrees, two episodes of Falling Skies, one, Heroes Reborn, eight episodes of Sleepy Hollow, and two, Iron Fist. In Iron Fist, the show is based on the Marvel comic by Roy Thomas and Gil Kane. I am probably one of the few people that enjoyed the film Electra, and I know there's a, a big component of people out there that didn't like it, but maybe that's because I didn't know any better when I was watching it. That could be the case, but I did enjoy it. I think Jeff Gardner was great in it, and things worked out for me personally, but I realized that not a lot of people enjoyed it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Mark Guggenheim over on the DC with the uh, Green Lantern movie, which I also enjoyed, but apparently nobody ever likes it. Yeah, it's just when it comes to Electra, those who had expectations of it, it was just, really? This is what you did with her? She's so much more than this. That's what it was. And just to drive my point home a little bit further the green lantern movie is actually canon in the cw universe thanks to the big crossover this past year yeah it looks like he won in the end well just in the cw universe the arrowverse as it was not necessarily in the dc anyway we have two episodes we're talking about today war without end and a duel of iron Michelle, I'm going to give you the dubious honor of trying to explain the theme with the title, War Without End. Well, they're fighting Davos. Then you have the Golden Tigers and the Hatchets. Then you have Davos versus Danny versus Colleen. It's just all of that stuff going on. Yeah, we'll talk more in depth briefly about the episode in a little bit and i'll leave my comments for them and i want to ask you since you took the hit and you just tried to describe war without end i want to ask you do you want to take a duel of iron or you want to give it to me hey i'll give it to you all right what do you think a duel of iron there is a lot going on in that episode this is the finale of iron fist they didn't know it was the finale of the series at the time but they, well, it was. It's canceled. It's not going any farther, but a duel of iron. There was a lot of duels going on. You had Colleen with Davos. You had Misty with uh, dueling with her iron, iron, quote unquote, arm. It, you had the 
uh, not Ward, but you had Danny going after Walker. Walker, yeah, Danny and Walker that were going after it with Iron. You had Katana. You had a assault rifle. So there was a lot of Iron that was being dual, and there was a lot of drawn out fights, which. I would have expected a lot more in this series than we got. We did get a fight just about every episode, but they did redeem themselves at the very end in terms of the fighting and the dueling. So that's what I'm saying a duel of iron is. Yeah, I would agree. There would also be the duel of iron between Colleen and Danny on who was going to get the iron fist, but that had been set up for the last three episodes. Yep. All right. So. That's the theme. That's what we're talking about in these two episodes. We're going to start with War Without End. I got to admit, this was another episode that I watched at speed between 1.5 and 2.0, and I don't think I missed anything. No. You did have a great comment by Misty when she was talking about finally getting the police department involved. She said, if you use the term to somebody that has political aspirations, pattern of discriminatory negligence you get results i thought that was classic misty it was it was i like that she was in the last two episodes and turk i think there was one series that turk wasn't in but i i think it was maybe jessica jones season two i i'm trying to remember the one series that we ran into that turk wasn't in but so far he's been in most of the series and I don't know if he continues that in the future, but Turk has been the thing that has tied the Netflix Defenders series together. Turk and Claire. What a pair. Turk. I'll, I'll give Turk. I have foreknowledge of Claire, but yeah, Turk. And you had the fights in the Bayard, which I have a whole host of issues with that why Bayard as the community center which is supposed to be helping people tends to turn into this mega fight where people are being stabbed and died and I just think they could have taken it somewhere else well Mrs. Yang is an investor she has that front face of being the main donor of the community center we saw that earlier when she was playing in that you know like charitable casino night and they were using it basically since it is supposed to be a community center and a place of peace she was using it as a place to meet with the hatchet sort of like neutral ground because of course they're not going to do anything violent there the one who does it is davos davos is the one that comes and he doesn't care Again, from the last week's episode, guilt by association. That's how far gone he's crossed the line. That's how far he's been going. It's guilt by association. He really doesn't care who he kills anymore. But we had been getting that for the past two or three episodes. So it was at the point where I'm like, why even uh, whatever? It it was drawn out too much, I think. Uh, I have comments about that at the end. Okay, so... And we also get the start of other things in this penultimate episode that are just sprinkled in. You have the discussion, I guess, with Frank Choi about Colleen's mother. He didn't realize what he was saying, but they picked up in between the lines that he helped her migrate into America. So there was that and the whole family background of Colleen, which then ultimately gets to something even more deeper, which I wish we'd have got earlier in the series. You also have the start of her transformation to the fist, to what we ultimately figure out is the white fist. I gather that's what we're going to call it, white fist. So that starts. And then you also have the saving of joy from Davos, who had been pushed off of I guess it's the top floor of a loft, so it's really kind of like a two-story drop versus a one-story drop, and she survived it, and then she gets saved at the end. So those things happen in the episode, but we don't really get resolution on any of it. Right. So then, let's move on to the finale, because that's where I want to focus most of our attention here. I 
I think a uh, war without end was way too much set up without too much happening. A duel without iron, you have what we were talking about. We have the Davos Kaleen fight. You have the Danny Misty and the Walker fight. You have uh, Kaleen actually getting the fist from Davos. That was the action, and that took place in the first half of the episode. Then you had a lot of epilogue after that. So do you want to focus on the action first before we get to the epilogue? Yes, because I have a lot to say when it comes to the epilogue. All right. So what do you want to say about the fights? I really uh, liked the action of it. I thought it was really interesting. I love seeing Misty punch her way out of being trapped and then being able to join the fight. Being able to help Danny bring Mary back from being Walker. I really was liking the Colleen Davos. I I do wish Colleen was able to take Davos on by herself. And I really think she could have, but the writers were like, well, this is the Iron Fist. We have to have Danny come in and fight and help her at the end. But I think it would have really cemented the point that Davos didn't deserve it, especially when we find out that she's descended from the Pirate Queen, who's the first female Iron Fist. And then her ability to have actually won that fight against Davos on her own really would have cemented why she deserved to have part of be a holder of the dragon spirit, be a fist. The escape from the cell with the iron. I don't know who designs a place with a lock on it like that, by the way. That's just not something that really happens but the escape from that was really cool where she's punching her way out she tries to punch her way up through the lock finds out she can't just because of the vast amount of iron there so she goes to the wall right there does take her a while to get out but she does misty does become part of the solution when it happens so that was pretty cool and the whole thing of I guess emasculating Davos at the end where Helene is able to finalize the transfer, even though it took multiple people to, to take him down, but she was able to, to finalize that transfer. Something must have happened in that transfer because at the very end, we're shown something else. And I went back to that scene and I couldn't determine if there was something specific. I'm guessing either something else happens in the future or they just didn't show us part of the transfer there but that was a very culminating event in this series and i actually don't even think like if if they would have thought that the series would have been renewed that they would have had some of those epilogue scenes but anyway the fights were really good they got the conclusion that we wanted to and then they moved into a half an hour of epilogue which if we had gotten a little bit more build up, better build up throughout the season, it would have meant even more. But they did a good job of setting up season three, which is never going to happen. No, no. Here's the thing. Okay. You always write a show with an ending. Yes, you hope to get renewed, but one of the reasons why The Expanse is awesome. So take season three, right? Okay. They're trying to figure out what you know what's going on and then there's the ring and all that type of stuff and they actually solve that mystery you know they go in there and then there's all the holes the the other portals open up right right so is there more story yes but that initial run of plot was done and it's one of those things that if it was canceled we at least got the resolution of this they left so much unanswered at the end of this, I would have, I, after this, I, I was, I was already like upset at this show, but at the end I was livid. And this is why this season could have been this, whatever this plot were in like two to three episodes. And then we could have had Misty Knight and Colleen in New York doing white fist 
Misty Knight Dragon of the Daughters thing. While Ward and Danny were trying to figure out what was going on. Because this season was just like a waste. It was just, hey, we did all this boring stuff. Here's 10 minutes of really awesome stuff that we could have done the entire season. The fact that Colleen was able to have those white fists and actually illuminate her katana at the same time. And then we see Danny with two guns have both of his fists and being able to shoot a bullet with two bullets and everything, which was cool. Like, whatever. Like, what? What was he like? Whatever he and Ward were doing, like they fight like in, oh, in Shanghai or no, Jakarta, Jakarta or stuff went missing or something. It's like, what did they do? Because Ward was like, yeah, things went sideways. What was that? What was that? What was next season going to be? Was it going to be some sort of like flashback? Like what were we going to get? Were we going to pick up there or were we going to have this whole flashback of like starting with Danny and and Ward on the plane and then finally getting to the whole like oh here's the scene that we ended season three with on episode nine of season three like what were they going to do because they left all this really cool stuff out so what would what would season three have been would they have like I said gone flashback and shown us the cool stuff like what what oh I don't disagree with anything you just said. It was uh, <laughs> it was a lot of what I had on my mind, and part of it I went into it going, "Well, it's already canceled, so this is all we get, and then we can only speculate at this point." If I would have seen it, and then it would have been canceled, it would have been like the Alpha's cancellation after I think season two, the Alpha's cancellation, where they had the big cliffhanger, and then you don't know what's happened next. There's a lot of series that end up like that. Not a ton, but a lot. And this ends up being that way. Now, can we get resolution in the remaining series? We've got Luke Cage. I can tell you for a fact, none of this is resolved in, in Luke Cage. And Luke Cage happens before this, by the way, in terms of the timeline. Then we have uh, The Punisher. We have a season of Daredevil and a season of Jessica Jones. So in those three seasons, I just don't see them going back to these characters. I think these characters are, are done and we're not going to see them anymore. Unlike like Foggy, who's been in a bunch of stuff. He's not like Turk, but he's been in a lot. He will come back in Daredevil and, and possibly Punisher. Maybe Jessica Jones. It depends on where his character is. And yeah, he can have a better resolution for the end of his character arc, but for this it's a big dangling thread, and I just hope at some point in time Marvel ties it up with a comment somewhere or a short scene somewhere. I think it's very few and far between, but yeah. So we did have a couple of cool things happen, as you pointed out. Uh, we had, I had loved this, the Nightwing, the, the homage to the character Nightwing, which you know, is a DC character, right? But they gave Misty Knight and clean wing night wing i thought that was pretty cool that they brought that together yeah that was funny also there was a comment that colleen made to danny which i thought was very insightful i never have really delved on this before but chance always looks like fate in the taillights i thought that was very insightful yeah and mary walker then gives the thing about the third altar, which is, as we know, because of comics, Typhoid Mary, and it would have been nice to delve into that, but we don't get anything into that. The thing that really bugged me, and you touched on it, was Danny got his fist back. How the heck did that happen? I mean, how? Yeah. Yeah. And then Clean's ancestor was the first to feed the dragon. Those were the key takeaways that I got, and those were probably the key takeaways of the entire series. And unfortunately, we don't get resolution to a bunch. Yeah, like this, this entire season could have been three episodes. I agree. And then we could have had all this really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. So there is that story out in somebody's mind 
of what happens next. And it will just really depend on if Marvel wants to pick it up or not. I think Marvel, they said they were just going to cancel. They weren't going to, if they brought the defenders over to something like Disney plus or something like that, iron fist wasn't going to be a part of it. So this is all we got. And I think we could go into, and I want to save this for later because we're not done with it yet, but this could go into a bigger discussion on the success or failure of Marvel TV. It is over now. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 7 is the last one. It's already been filmed, so we can't change anything out of it. But the question remains, has Marvel TV been a success or a failure or both? It depends on your point of view, right? So I look forward to having that discussion later on the summer with you and Lauren and Haley. Yeah, that's going to be quite the discussion. So with that, is there anything else you want to say about Iron Fist or any of the characters? Colleen, maybe? You know, Colleen and Misty, I would have loved to have seen that uh, so much that it was that could have been awesome. The evolution of power, by the way, with both Colleen and Danny, where they were transferring their power into the katana and into the pistols. Yeah. That was awesome. That was so cool. Why didn't we? Anyway, I had my rant. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was weird that Walker was going to stick around with Joy because I have a third, I have a third altar. I don't know what it is. You're going to help me find it. Okay. How did, like, I didn't really care about Joy had this huge, big plan about her own company and stuff that got dropped. How did she live? Because that's concrete. And she landed on her side. So she would have shattered. She would have shattered this part of her. And then the impact would have gotten into her ribs. She should have had a punctured something. I, I mean, I can understand her being alive for a little bit. But then being. I like that was just. She was kept alive to have that final conversation with Ward. Yeah, I know. She, it was plot armor. I did like the fact that the pregnancy didn't magically bring Bethany and Ward together. I was afraid they were going to do that, but they didn't. I was actually kind of almost expecting Bethany to go. I had to think of myself. I had an abortion, which I would have completely have supported. It was probably somewhere that even... Netflix didn't want to go with these characters at the time. I mean, it's a political statement, right? Well, yeah, but I would have completely supported it. I mean, she, she's right. She has to think of herself. Mm -hmm. She um, is a recovering addict. And I like the fact that she basically made the statement of. I'm not going to take care of two children. I hate that idea of men being children that when women say oh i actually you know like you, you think you actually they're married they have two kids and then they say that well really i have three kids it's like no your husband is not an effing kid anyway that's a whole thing but i'm really glad that that wasn't some sort of like magic moment and then it was like oh i love you oh i love you and everything's fine i'm glad they actually held handled that realistically a lot of these characters in the marvel universe could be deemed that the male characters can be deemed that way as acting like children, whether it's Matt Murdock or if it's Luke Cage or whatever, they, they all run into that faulty logic, which can bend them into being a child in terms of how they're thinking of things. But really they're just trying to do the best they can. And not everybody doesn't matter. Gender can make the best decisions as things. It's just my, two cents there yeah with the, the whole joy thing the only thing that i can think of to, for joy to come back is maybe they do some sort of thing where she's bought back into the company and she's running rand while danny and ward are traipsing around asia it sounded like they were all stopping in asia for yeah. six, except for uh, i think there was an african board in there but anyway it sounded like Somebody needs to stay back and run the company. So maybe Joy is doing that. I don't know. Yeah. 
Joy is also stuck with Mary Walker, and she doesn't want to. Mary doesn't even take the money as she leaves. I know, which, that doesn't make any sense. Well, she, I think her point was our contract isn't done, it's evolved, it's changed, and I'm, just, I'm not going to take the money and call it done. I think that's what went through my head when I was watching that, going, what? Why doesn't even she take the money? And it was because... In my mind, anyway, she doesn't want to say that the contract is finished, that their relationship is finished. It's not. It's going to continue. Yeah. But we don't get to see any of that. So, yeah, yeah. that's it. Iron Fist. The se- yeah. season, the series, and yeah. It's all done. All done. But we have something really cool coming up. It's called Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 7. It is the season that nobody saw coming in terms of we're going to get it and we are going to get it and we've got a glimpse into that in just a second there's been some minor news stories as we've progressed the last few weeks and honestly the news stories that we've gotten from marvel considering everything that's going on in the world is actually pretty good pacing for a studio or studios to leave out information but this in particular was a sneak peek of season one episode one it was dropped on youtube about five days ago and we got to see a scene of the upcoming episode it gave into the sights smells and sounds of the time period our heroes find ourselves which we had a little bit of a sense of there's already been a character that's been through this. So I thought the scene was pretty cool considering it delved into everything. The fact that what time period that they're in, uh, the fact of the time dilation that they're in and what they can and cannot do in the timeline. It delved into the racial tensions of the time. And I think they covered maybe not everything, but a lot just in that one scene. I haven't had a chance to watch it. Oh, you haven't. It's a meaningless scene in the grand scheme of things, but they do go into uh, ripples in the timeline. It's like a river. You throw a stick in the river. It doesn't change the ultimate course of the river, but you throw enough sticks. It creates a dam and the river is forever changed in its course. So you have to be watched out not to change out too many things and of course the uh the son of the married couple is uh also given his experience of going back in time because daisy brings up the fact that i've always thought about this in black and white and it is it's alive in in color technicolor sort of thing and, and he's like yeah i've been been there done that sort of thing. so if you haven't seen it yet i'll put the link in the show notes it's interesting, but the episode is coming out Wednesday night, 9 p.m. I'm going to be watching it probably live just because it's going to be so late for me. Got to get to bed to get to telework in the morning. And uh, I'm guessing you're going to be watching it live too, right, Michelle? If I can. Okay. So we'll be talking about it Thursday night, 9 p.m. Is there anything else with season seven before we get to it with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that you want to talk about? They. The cast keeps talking about how they were able to do a whole bunch of really cool stuff and do some of the things that they never thought they could. I hope it lives up to the hype. Me too. I hope they stick the landing, even though that was the end, end of season five. We got not one, but two bonus series seasons out of the here. So, yeah. That comes up in just a couple of days. And if you want to talk to us about the episode, you just have one day in between when it airs and when we record in order to get your comments into us. But if you want to talk to us about our podcast, we will, and anything that we say in the podcast, we will run down your feedback in the following. All right, Michelle, if there's nothing else, I think it's time for us, you and I, just to abandon our Fortune 500 company and take a road trip somewhere. Let's say Asia. Let's go ahead and do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who cares about thousands of people being employed? Who cares? Especially now. Yeah. Okay. Thank 
you listener and viewer for sticking with us so far we have gone through an iron fist we will be backpedaling to luke cage and we look forward to that and thank you for sticking with us through our entire hiatus we're between season six and season seven of agents of shield we can't wait to get back to it next week yes thank you for sticking with us 42 weeks it's 42 weeks 40 do you have days and hours on there as well no I just have weeks, SP. Okay. Just weeks. I'm only human. <laughs> so thank you, everyone, for sticking with us during this drought and for listening to my little, you know, tirades and such. So thank you. All right. We'll see everybody next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. If you want to leave us feedback, go to gunageek.com and you will find all our contact information and other shows. You can also visit legendsofshield.com where you'll find our complete archive of podcasts. The music heard on this podcast is by Kevin McLeod, found at incompetech.com and also artists on pond5.com and audiojungle.net. The opinions heard on this podcast are those of the individual hosts and do not represent Stargate Pioneer Productions, Legends of Shield, or Gunna Geek. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the property of the Disney Corporation, Marvel Studios, and ABC. No infringement is intended. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is copyright 2013 through 2020.